Hello, everyone, and welcome to GVSU's Alumni Live. I am so thrilled to be here. My name is Sarah Naraki. I'm, of course, an alumni of Grand Valley State University from the film and video production um, major. And today I'm going to be joined by some fellow alumni, and we're going to be talking about film festivals. So to give you a little background on myself, um, I dabble in a lot of film festivals. I founded the or co-founded the Grand Rapids Feminist Film Festival. Um, I have been part of the Kent District Library Teen Film Fest. I'm a screener and judge for the Austin Film Fest, and I've also helped with um, the Open Projector Night, which was run by the uh, Urban Institute of Contemporary Arts. So um, in addition, as a filmmaker, I have submitted to a lot of film festivals. So needless to say, I've got a, a little bit of experience in every aspect of film festivals. But we have some other experts that are going to be joining us today. Um, first, I'd like to do, introduce John Otterbacher. He is a full-time film faculty at Flashpoint Chicago, a campus of Columbia College, Hollywood, and award-winning uh, filmmaker in Chicago. John works closely with film festivals, both as a filmmaker and as a board member, as well as a committee member um, or a juror including the Chicago International Film Festival, Cine Youth, Chicago Underground Film Festival, and our very own Grand Rapids Film Fest. How's it going, John? It's going really well. I'm excited to talk about film festivals. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, you got a whole lot of experience to bring to the table, so we are looking forward to your input. I stay busy. Good, good. So another person joining our chat today is Jackson Isinga. He is a writer, a director, producer, and actor uh, who calls Grand Rapids his home. His short film License and Registration was shown at the San Antonio Film Festival, the Chicago Underground Film Festival, and various other festivals in the U.S., Canada, and even Europe in 2019. That's amazing. Um, for over four years, he was also a part of UIC's Open Projector Night. What's up? Um, and he was part of the selection panel there, and he also continues to freelance on various productions throughout Michigan and around the country. You are a busy bee, Jackson. Thank you so much for taking the time to come chat with us today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Sarah. It's good to be here. Good. Well, we are so happy to have you. Additionally joining us, we have Deanna Morse, who is an independent filmmaker specializing in animation and personal short films and videos. Deanna's work has been screened internationally and are represented in permanent collections, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. She's a writer and an educator and has judged over three dozen international film festivals and competitions. She's served on numerous grant panels. She is a favorite former film professor at Grand Valley and most recently, she was invited to join the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science Awards Selection Committee for the Oscars. It is an honor to have you here, Deanna. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I love film festivals and I'm really glad to be here with this panel too. So we should have a good discussion. Looking yeah. forward to it. We've got a great mix. And we actually have one other person who couldn't join us live today. Um, but he was so kind that he could pre-record some answers for us, and that is Joel Petrikas. Um, Not only is he a filmmaker and has dabbled in festivals, um, but he's also a professor at Grand Valley. So I'll let Joel go ahead and introduce himself. Hello, my name is Joel Petrikas. I'm an independent filmmaker living in Grand Rapids, and I teach fiction, filmmaking, and screenwriting here at Grand Valley State University. So um, I've made four feature films. My first feature film premiered at the Locarno Film Festival in Switzerland, which is like one of the biggest art house festivals in the world. And my other three features have premiered at South by Southwest in Austin, which is like the second most important festival in the country um, after Sundance. And from there, I've traveled around to all the, the other smaller regional festivals or um, you know country festivals uh, in support of those those films and that's by far the most important work I do as a filmmaker outside of making the film is touring around with it um, through the festivals. 
All right, thank you, Joel, for that introduction. So let's dive into the first question here, which I know we did a little bit of your bios, but I'd love to hear a little more about each of your experiences with film festivals. Um, John, could we have you kick it off? Could you tell us more about your experience? Uh, sure, that'd be great. Um, you know, I think as, as most filmmakers, most of my experience started with film festivals, uh, going to film festivals and participating. Um, and then uh, to any degree, I encourage all students and young filmmakers to, to just go to film festivals and talk to people. Um, but uh, yeah, I was going to film festivals. I started submitting work to film festivals. Um, number of features, uh, both narrative fiction, uh, documentary most recently, lots of shorts. And at a certain period of time, you, you're meeting people at film festivals and I um, through my connections with IFP Chicago and just the film community here in Chicago, um, realized that a lot of film festivals need help. They're an important part of our community. And so when I was uh, reached out to, uh, to see if I wanted to participate in film festivals, most of the time my answer was yes. How can I, how can I be involved in this really rich uh, part of our industry? And so <laughs> I kind of... Uh, through a variety of different channels, became involved in film festivals, uh, either as a jury member or um, I did some screening early on. I found that to be kind of exhausting. Um, I've helped uh, in terms of being on a board or right now I'm on the educational advisory committee for Cinema Chicago. So that runs both the Cine Youth Film Program as well as the Chicago International Film Program. So I recommend that or I, uh, I um, give them recommendations and feedback from uh, educational perspective as well as being a filmmaker. Um, so yeah, I've been involved in all different sides of the film festival industry. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. I mean, I just think it's a really, really important part of our industry, particularly if you're trying to make independent films. Um, I just think, uh, you know, you've got to get out there, you've got to show your work, you've got to network, um, all the things we're going to be talking about today. So yeah, I, I, I'm involved in as many ways as I can be. It's really fascinating once you get into film festivals to realize how much goes into it and how many different positions there are. I know when I was a student and looking into submitting to the first film fest, I just assumed it's, well, I'm submitting and then there's someone on the other side who screens it and says you win or you lose and that's it. But as John is explaining, there's a lot more, there's other departments, there's so much that goes into it. So it's great to know that there are different ways that you can get into um, helping film festivals. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Deanna. Of, oh, sorry, I was gonna say lots of volunteer opportunities for students too, really lots, like film festivals need help. If you're interested in learning more, I think most of them are, are, are looking for help, so sorry. That's a, no, that's a really great point. I'm glad you said that. And um, not just local film festivals. As I mentioned, I do screenings for the Austin Film Fest. A lot of them are set up for remote work too. So that's a, a good tip to keep in mind. Um, Deanna, could you share your experience with us of uh, film festivals? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a film festival nut and I have to say it's what kept me sane during lockdown because I felt like I could connect with my peeps, with people that shared common interests with me which um, in my case are experimental animation, but I really do love all kinds of film or I at least engage with a lot of different films. My first film festival was in college. I got a couple films into a film festival at my university. And since then, I've regularly been to festivals for a couple decades. I taught animation workshops at the Sinking Creek Film Celebration, which later became the Nashville Film Festival. I've been an attendee, I've been a staff, an organizer, I've been on selection committees, um, a judge, I'm on the advisory board. And right after lockdown, I um, participated in the Ann Arbor Film Festival where I was a super screener <laughs> because I judged um, 370 films out of their 3,000 or so entries. And for the past several years, I've been on the selection committee for Ann Arbor, which is more interested in experimental, innovative, cutting edge um, films and films that also kind of reflect on media. Um, I also, this year I probably did six to eight film festivals. I judged a festival in China 
um, last fall, which was really interesting and sort of a cultural um, shock to get to see a lot of Chinese animation, although it was also international. I did Ann Arbor again. Um, and then last summer, as mentioned, I was invited to join the Academy. And, um, you know, I should say that that invitation came out of my being at a film festival. Um, I was sitting around one night talking to a few people who were in the Academy and um, they were talking about their opportunities and screenings. I'm like, wow, that really sounds cool. That sounds like fun. And they said, whoa, have you ever been nominated? And I'm like, no, I thought you had to have an Oscar, you know, to be nominated for the Academy. And they're like, no, with your body of work and your history and your involvement in festivals, I think you're a good candidate. And um, this friend of mine, woman from um, CalArts said, I'll nominate you and if you, don't get in the first year, we'll just keep trying. And fortunately on the first take, I got in. So that was a hit of happiness for me too during the um, pandemic. So that's kind of my background and I'll talk about networking some other things later when we get to those questions. Well, thank you for sharing that experience. And I actually was gonna ask you how you got involved with the Oscars and being on that committee. So that's good to know. My assumption would have been that you have to you know, like you said, win an Oscar and all these other things, but just the fact that that came from networking is incredible. And that's a, a good thing to know for um, up and coming filmmakers. Thank you. Jackson, how about you? Can you tell us about your experience with film festivals? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I didn't really go to my first film festival until I got accepted into one after college, um, which is kind of sad because like John mentioned, it's a great, they're, they're great places to go to and uh, uh, network and watch movies and uh, show your work on a big screen. Um, but yeah, my senior thesis uh, got accepted into the East Lansing Film Festival. And so that was my first experience and I thought, this is awesome. Uh, I need to keep doing this. Uh, so I continued to submit uh, my work uh, to festivals and I also got involved with uh, Open Project Night, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, screening hundreds of films a year uh, and putting together a show. Um, and then uh, I've also attended some of the bigger festivals. Uh, Joel mentioned South by Southwest. Um, I went there with him and the crew because uh, I worked on those movies. Um, and this year during lockdown, I also was checking out the uh, kind of experimental virtual film festivals. Um, and that was a lot of fun to um, kind of get to know as well, so. That's so great. Um, and I'm glad that you both, Deanna and Jackson, have mentioned experimental film festivals. Ann Arbor has a special place in my heart. We've, uh, I say we as in the Community Media Center and Grand Rapids Public Library, and I have been bringing the um, touring Ann Arbor Film Fest to Grand Rapids for the past couple of years. So it's, uh, something that you wouldn't assume would be something to submit to for a film fest. You know, most people think it's probably like short films and documentaries and that's it. But, um, you know, people do hand painting on film and scratching film and wild animations and all sorts of things. So um, as well as I think we'll get to this a little, late, a little bit later, film festivals are not just limited to video. Also, you can submit screenplays too. So considering all the different opportunities for getting into festivals, there are quite a few. Um, so our next question, we've kind of dabbled a little bit with the answers, but it is uh, why are film festivals important to filmmakers? And I'm gonna throw it over to Joel to give us his insight first. Uh, festivals are important for filmmakers because we're lucky to have this kind of structure in place, which if you think of something like uh, a band, a musician, there, there is no system in place to guarantee that if something is good, it will make it. I've seen a lot of them, some of the best bands I've ever seen have no record deal or no distribution because they don't have like a festival or a festival is set up where the best films made that year will absolutely be seen by audiences, journalists, agents, managers, producers, distributors, whatever it may be. Uh, and the whole idea that that um, festivals only look at films if they have a, a big star or a big budget or a no, it's made by a known director. That's uh, no reputable festival I've ever heard of would ever consider 
passing on a film that's good just because it doesn't have the right people or the right backing behind it. So um, it doesn't matter who you are or where you live or, or how much resources you have. You've told a great story, um, a good story through a unique perspective, which is what festivals are looking for. You will succeed. And so that's how I found my career through, through festivals. That's really great insight there. Thank you, Joel, for that response. Um, Deanna, I want to throw this question to you first, particularly because of your involvement with the Oscars. Many people might think that, as Joel was kind of alluding to, that it has to be big name directors and, you know, big stars that are part of the films that get into it. But they actually have a shorts department or category as well, three of them. So tell us about how you find that even big award ceremonies like the Oscars are important for all sorts of filmmakers. Yeah, well, the Oscars is still kind of new to me, but I did judge the Student um, Academy Awards this year, and they have um, a narrative category, a documentary category, and an animation category. They also have a screenplay category. It's called the Nickel Screenplay Competition, and I judged that, too. I signed up to judge everything just because, you know, it's lockdown, and um, I want to see cool new work. Um, but they also have a YouTube channel with some really informative um, little videos that anyone can access. You don't have to be part of the Academy to do that. Um, but there's so many festivals too. You know, I, I looked it up last night. Wikipedia said there are 3,000 in the US, but I went on Film Freeway and there were 10,654 festivals. So part of it is finding the festival that kind of is like your interests and that fits your films. And you know, why to go, you share your work, you see new work, you get inspired, you meet new friends and you get to party with your peeps. So true. I think that's half the fun is getting to see people that you don't maybe see very often, especially if it's a festival out of town. So great insight there. Um, John, let's uh, bring it to you. Why do you feel like festivals are important for filmmakers? Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I think there's this community aspect to it. Um, as filmmakers, sometimes we work with a, a smaller group of people um, that we uh, are, we collaborate with, uh, or we work in a certain city or town uh, or state and um, are kind of limited by those experiences. Not in a bad way necessarily, um, but, but still it can be kind of a limited view and perspective of what's happening out there. And I think you've got to go and see um, films from all over the place. And that's that's one of the great opportunities in film festivals is seeing all these, uh, as Joel put it, you know, like unique perspectives and viewpoints um, from all over. So it could be all over your state, it could be a regional, it could be national, it could be international. Um, you know, and I think, uh, I just think there's a lot of value in that. Um, I also think if you're interested in participating in film festivals, as in submitting your film to film festivals, you've got to go see those films and see see what other people are making, uh, be part of that, um, that larger community and that larger awareness of, of kind of what films are trending right now. Um, I will just, I just want to throw out a little counterpoint to Joel. I'm a little more jaded than uh, Mr. Petroikis about film festivals. Um, you know, uh, there is an inside line to a lot of film festivals and having named talent uh, is absolutely helpful when getting into film festivals. Um, but yeah, I mean, whether you have name talent or not, I mean, I went to Sundance while I was in college. I drove out there just to experience it. I've been to South by and Tribeca, I've been to all the big festivals. Um, and even when I'm not participating in the film festival as a filmmaker or panelist, I still just, I'm inspired when I go there and I come back with this new, this new energy um, about filmmaking. And that's, that's wonderful. We need, we need motivation and enthusiasm as filmmakers to keep us going, so. I think those are really great points and to consider that film festivals are not just about submitting programs and winning awards. It's, it's the exposure to other art and cultures and perspectives. And like you said, we need inspiration. Um, so yeah, great reason to go to festivals, even if you're not submitting to it. Jackson, what about you? What are your thoughts on how festivals uh, help filmmakers? Um, I mean, everyone touched on a lot of important things. Uh, about what makes festivals important. And I think that for me, it's it's definitely the community aspect. And I mean, festivals in the name, there's like a festival 
atmosphere and energy uh, when you're at um, these events. And um, it makes you excited about watching movies, about talking uh, about movies, about meeting filmmakers and people who just love movies. It's just a great collection of people who are all there for the same thing. And um, it's, it's hard to have a bad time at a, at a film festival. So just at that, at the very least, it's, it's a great time. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so how about students submitting to film festivals? Is there a benefit for them to enter as students or should they wait till they graduate? Um, Deanna, I'll throw it to you first because you mentioned experience with students submitting to film fests. Yeah, and I was a student when I got my film in a, my first film festival. I definitely recommend that students enter film fests, but you need to be kind of selective. And you can go, you know, and study like which ones are open to students or first filmmakers and think about if you can attend that festival. I think sometimes people think that like Sundance is the only thing. Oh, well, I'm making a film, I'm gonna put it in Sundance. But the chance of getting in Sundance is really slim. But there are other festivals that your chance of getting in is good and that you could also attend and then show your work there. But definitely I think students should enter and as was mentioned before, should volunteer for festival work. Yeah, definitely volunteering, not only so you can kind of see the caliber of films coming through and get inspiration as we mentioned, um, but network with people and see what it takes. Great tip there. Um, John, I'll bring it to you next. What are your thoughts on students um, entering film festivals? Yeah, I 100% agree with Deanna. I, I think um, submitting your work to, to film festivals while you're still a student is really beneficial. Um, it, if nothing else, you start to learn about the process, you do your research. Um, and because, you know, the, the downside to there being so many festivals is that there's so many festivals and it's kind of confusing. Um, and the higher end festivals tend to feed each other a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of local and regional film festivals that students can get into. There's student only film festivals. You know, um, I was a juror for the Cine Youth Film Festival here in Chicago, which is actually happening right now. You can still watch movies for free uh, online. Um, but, uh, you know, that's a student only film festival. So why wait until you're a professional competing with professionals when if you think you've got good work, you can compete with other students? Um, you know, look for film festivals that are in your you know uh grasp so to deanna's point of like staying local to film festivals you'd actually go to or that have a similar subject matter to maybe the subject matter of your film um but yeah absolutely we teach um you know film festival submission and um research etc and have assignments on that in our program here it's, it's part of our curriculum because i think it's so important that's really great that you guys include that in your curriculum. I think that's, it truly is an essential part of the field. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you offer that. Uh, Jackson, what are your thoughts about students entering film festivals? Um, I'm with John and Deanna, absolutely 100%. Um, but I also wanna echo uh, kind of what they were talking about is being selective about where you submit because I don't know if this has been mentioned yet, but submitting to uh, film festivals can get really expensive really fast. And so choosing where you're going to submit and looking at how much it's going to cost, I think is, is an important thing to do or else you're going to end up going through potentially hundreds of dollars pretty easily. Um, so yeah, regional festivals are, are a great start, um, places that you can go to. Um, but that's, uh, like I mentioned earlier, my first festival experience was the East Lansing Film Festival. They had a student uh, category and uh, I submitted and got in, got to go and that kind of started, started everything. So um, yeah, definitely do it. That's great to hear about your experience. Um, and as we've mentioned multiple times that there are film festivals that are specific for students. And one of the ones that I'm a judge for is local to Grand Rapids, which is the Kent District Library Teen Film Festival. Um, and that's a good place to get started. But I know we've probably all experienced as screeners that students will submit to film fests. And I think my piece of advice in that realm would be, um, you know, get experience filming outside of the projects that you're assigned in class, grab your friends and go film stuff um, just for fun. 
And those tend to be the better films that you can submit. But by going to film festivals or volunteering at them, I think um, up and coming filmmakers were kind of, will see what plays well and what the quality expectations are. So that's really crucial to it. Um, so the next question is getting into more of the networking aspect of festivals. And I know that Joel has some great insight to share with us about networking. So let's take a listen to that. Tips for networking. First and foremost, you have to go to every single party. Um, a good festival will have um, a breakfast for the filmmakers, a lunch, a dinner, and then one or two, maybe more big parties. You got to go to the parties, even if you're dead hungover from the party the night before, you're tired, just not in the mood, whatever it is, you're there to, again, as kind of gross as it sounds, to sell yourself and sell your film. And that's when you meet people. And, and it's never like go to a party with a pocket full of business cards. Just let that organically happen. Just just hang out with people. People just want to hang out. And if they like you, then they're going to start to ask about what you're up to next or start to ask about, you know, where can they see your film and things like that. But I never go... The, the, the whole idea of networking sounds so kind of dirty and business-like. And we're artists. We're not business people with suit and ties. So um, don't approach these parties or networking events, whatever you want to call them, uh, as an opportunity to promote yourself or your film. Just look at just to place to connect with people who are like-minded or see the world in a different way. Um, but you should never be, hi, my name is Joel and you should come see my film and here's this flyer and here's my business card. Like, no, no, no. It just comes organically. Just just be cool and it'll happen. Uh, most of the actors for my films are actors that I've met at festivals and it's just because we, we hung out and had a good time. Same with uh, even producers and other crew positions I've met at festivals. And it was never an exchange of business cards ever. It was just an exchange of ideas. I love that. Just just be cool, as Joel says. <laughs> don't think of it about, or don't think of it as a, you know a, a business meeting. It's just supposed to be fun. And look at the opportunity that came up from Deanna going to a, a, one of the festival parties and the connections that she makes. A, a lot of great opportunities there. Um, Jackson, I'm going to throw it to you first, but I've got a little bit of a curveball with this question because I feel like you and I had a conversation during the pandemic about attending. Um, these networking parties virtually, right? So it's a little different right now that you can't be in person. So what's that experience been like for you? Yeah, so during the pandemic, um, I attended a few different film festivals virtually. And the ones that I remembered um, and had, I guess, a better time at were the ones that did have uh, networking opportunities and virtual parties. Uh, there was one festival called Nightstream uh, that you made a little 8-bit character and you could walk around uh, like 8-bit world and interact with other festival goers. Um, and when you get close to somebody, their video would pop up and you could talk that way. So that was kind of a cool, um, innovative way to keep that networking aspect of film festivals alive uh, during the pandemic. Um, but maybe when things do get back to normal uh, or somewhat normal, whatever that's gonna be. Um, I would say uh, another way to, to network is to go to movies that you wanna see and that you think sound cool or sound great um, and talk with people afterwards because they've just experienced the same movie that you did. You were excited about it. Uh, these people likely were too. I think that's another good way to meet people uh, who are like-minded because you already saw the same movie now you can talk about it so i think that's a really great point as joel mentioned that you don't have to think about it in the terms of a business meeting and making those connections it's more about just having fun and even if you're not going to you know find the next actor for your film or your crew members or something just talking to people about the film that you just watched i think that's a really great point um, Deanna, what insight do you have about tips for networking? We'll go with, you know, in person, unless you have some virtual experience you want to add as well. No, I, I have virtual experience too. In the last uh, couple of months, I've been to three festivals that had those kind of virtual lobbies with the little avatars that you walk around and meet other people and, and all designed sort of differently, sometimes with a table that only had two people. And so you could have private conversations and sometimes a wider thing where you explored and then you 
found people and they're, they zoomed up. Um, and yeah, they are like parties where you get to talk to people and have fun. But um, unlike, you know, what Joel was saying, my experience at festivals is people ask, do you have a film in the festival? What is it? And, um, and we're sharing links to our websites and to our films in the chat. And for physical festivals, I think it's really important to have something that you can give people, not like Joel said, it's not like you go up and you just say, oh, hi, I'm Deanna and here's my business card. But as you, after you talk to people for a while, you might want to exchange cards or like at the end of the conversation or make postcards. You know, this is um, real common, a postcard that shows your film on it that helps people remember what film you saw, you know, what you had in the festival and has your contact info on the back. Um, that kind of swap back and forth of business cards and postcards is very common. And of course, you know, swapping DVDs that are, it's um, actually, I have my Oscar box here too. DVDs are not dead yet. It's still a way that people share films or they share them on a zip drive too. Another thing that, um, I mean, there are a ton of articles about how to actually network, meet people, be successful at festivals. One of the things we used to do when I took students to SIGGRAPH is we agreed that we weren't going to hang in a pack with each other, but we were going to split up during the day. And that forced us when we got on the bus to meet new people. And then at the end of the day, we'd come together and share who we'd met and maybe be able to introduce someone you know, in our group to this new group of friends that we had connected with um, at the festival. But people do hats and t-shirts. Um, I was making bags for a while so that I could carry around the festival program. And then also, you know, if someone said, what about your film? I'd point to this image on the bag. Um, but another way that you can network at festivals is festivals have bags and they're usually brightly colored. And you can see that somebody down the street is also wearing <laughs> you know, the, the brand of the festival that you're at. And it's easy to go up and just say, oh, hi, you're at Glass, I'm at Glass. Um, you know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Oregon, I'm from so-and-so. You have a filming competition. I mean, that's, that's common kind of festival chat. That's great advice. And I love the idea of, um, you know, more creative ways to share uh, the information about movies that you've created, like the postcards or the swag or anything like that. So it doesn't just have to be a business card. That's great. Um, John, what are your thoughts? Any additional tips for networking at festivals that you'd like to share? I think there's some really great advice um, from everybody before. I like the idea of a bag with your uh, the image from your film on. I think that's cool. Um, I think swag in general is cool. Um, so yeah, I don't necessarily know about business cards, but I've done postcards before. Um, uh, I don't know if that helps with networking, but it, but the postcards definitely helped with um, getting attendance to your film uh, at a film festival. Uh, oftentimes it's very competitive, lots of different screening venues and weird hours. And so you're like, trying to get a good audience into your your film, depending on the level of film festival. Some festivals, everything's sold out. Other times, you know, you got to hustle a little bit. Um, uh, beyond the bags, I would say look for the filmmaker badges. You know, uh, oftentimes you go to film festivals and there's only a small percentage of the people that are actually filmmakers. Um, so you look for the, the festival, like the filmmaker badges, and they're generally like color coded in some way that you can see that it's not just like a pass holder, like they're a filmmaker. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a great way to just be like, oh, you're a filmmaker. I'm, I've got a film, too. What are you guys seeing? Um, I tell my students and anybody interested, really, that it's about having a, a common uh, some sort of commonality. And then the next step would be like an authentic interest. So before you go to a film festival, you know, study the program and see if there's any filmmakers uh, in particular that you would really do want to connect with. You know, you've seen their work at other festivals or it seems to have a vision similar to yours. Um, you know, go to those movies. And then I think uh, Jackson mentioned hanging out after the movie and talking to people because filmmakers are, are sometimes get exhausted with kind of silly questions from audiences. They're not always silly, but sometimes they're a little repetitive. Um, whereas me interacting with another filmmaker is kind of refreshing after you've been talking to people who are 
maybe not filmmakers. Um, so, you know, looking for like an authentic interest in people's work. If you go up to somebody or you ask them a question that's very specific to their film or their career, it shows that you've actually spent some time, um, you know, uh, researching them, not stalking necessarily, but doing some research. Generally, people will respond really well to that authentic interest or shared interest, or maybe you have a common friend that you met at another film festival. Um, look for those angles to start conversation. And then as Joel says, you want it to be like real. Um, you don't want to, um, to be too business-like. It's not, uh, it's not a accountant's convention. It's a film festival. And so, uh, go to the parties and talk to people and try and enjoy yourself. Find people that are you know, like-minded. I love it. Not an accountants festival. That's a different chat. We'll have another day. Conference. No, accountants oh, don't conference, have conference. Conference. That's right. <laughs> um, so we've talked a lot about the networking and experiencing festivals, but um, I think it'd be good if we can get into tips for getting accepted into the festivals and having your content screened. So first, we're going to have Joel chime in here because he's got a unique perspective on choosing a festival for premiering your film. So let's take a listen to what he has to say. The most important part of your festival strategy is your world premiere. The world premiere dictates the entire life of the film. I like to think of it like, like a pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid, you have the top five festivals. If you have a premiere, world premiere at one of these top five festivals, then you're going to be able to trickle down the entire pyramid. You cannot, cannot go up the pyramid. You can only go down. At the top, we have can. Berlin, Sundance, Venice, Toronto, aka TIFF. And so if you premiere at those, you can basically play every single festival in the entire world after that. But if you premiere at um, the Cleveland Film Festival, which is a regional festival, you can't then play Sundance. Um, there's kind of a, a hierarchy in there and every festival wants your world premiere. They want the exclusive, they want to be the first ones to show it and say, we discovered Quentin Tarantino. So you have to do your homework and hold out for the biggest festival possible, but also kind of be self-aware and know, does can this film actually compete at Sundance or is it better suited for Cinetopia Festival here in Michigan, which is a great festival. But again, if you premiere, have a world premiere at Cinetopia, you're not then going to be able to play Cam. It just doesn't work that way. So just do your homework, um, play at the biggest, most important festival most important first. Festival first. That's really great advice. And actually that's something that I didn't learn until I got involved with a film festival um, between volunteering and getting on the, um, you know, the curation side of things. I didn't realize that there was that stipulation that once you get into a certain film fest, it might kind of block you from others or some say, hey, if you're gonna be premiering at ours, you can't play somewhere else. So I'm really glad that Joel brought up that point of doing your homework. Um, that being said, for any students that are watching, I wouldn't get too worried about that. Don't get caught up in, in it if it's your first time. Just go have fun with it. So, John, let's throw it to you. Um, what other tips do you have for getting your work accepted in a film festival? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would second your comment, Sarah. I just think uh, I wouldn't overthink um, that. If, you have, if you're in Joel's situation, you have a feature um you know uh i think it's a different story but if you have a short or especially a student short i wouldn't overthink it um you know i'll go back to what deanna said earlier i think i look at festivals and it's kind of like shopping in a way not that i can buy an entrance into a film festival but i'm kind of shopping for festivals that i would like to participate in i've seen their work before um or I, i've seen some of the films that were there i have it's a place i might actually go to um, you know, especially when you're a student or you're submitting short film short films, they're not necessarily going to fly you out. Uh, I've never been flown anywhere for short. For feature, yes, short, no. Um, so look for festivals that you would, like, that's how you'd want to spend your vacation, is going to this film festival and participating in it. Or you could drive there for a long weekend. You know, maybe Cleveland is a great film festival for you because it's, four hours away and it seems like a fun place to go hang out. Um, make sure that you do some research about the, you know, the quality, I can't think of a better word, the production value, whatever, whatever metric you want to use that the films playing at the festival are, as Joel mentioned, kind of not beyond your reach. This idea, this dream that everybody has about Sundance 
or Tribeca or South by Southwest or Cannes or Berlin or any of these others, um, you know, make sure that your film is at that kind of level and use any, absolutely anything you can that helps um, your film have an advantage. So maybe that's being a student. Maybe that's being a student from a particular background, uh, being a person of color, being a woman, having a different sexual orientation, um, coming from a different part of the world. Whatever it is, it's so competitive that any, absolutely any sort of, I don't want to say angle because I think that's kind of gross, but if they're looking for a film that you might have uh, that perspective, absolutely, you know, go in that direction. So. Yeah, great advice. And I know we're going to um, get into searching for festivals in just a minute. And I'll say in the to the same note of what you're saying, John, about using your background, whether you're a student or, you know, in my case, a woman applying for a film festival, that also goes for grants for making your films, too. So Absolutely. I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. So I'm really glad that you said that. Um, Jackson, what about you? Any advice that you have to share about getting your work accepted into a film festival? Um, I would go off on what uh, John said. Uh, research is very important. Uh, seeing what films have played um, at the fest in the past. So if there's one that like, oh, I really want to go here, I, it'd be really cool to get in. Take a look at their archive because most festivals have that on their website. Like if you have a short, you can look at what shorts played uh, there in the past. And a lot of those are even available online. So you can kind of match your film. I know it can be hard because I don't know, my senior thesis, I thought it was good enough for Sundance at the time. I mean, looking back at it now, I know it wasn't or <laughs> isn't, but I think that actually putting your film against films that have played in the fest that you're kind of looking at is a good way. Like, Hmm. Yeah. My, the quality of my film is, pretty closer, oh, it's way better than this, I think, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I would say, uh, let's see, tips, yeah, uh, filling out your submission form completely. Uh, as a screener, uh, it's kind of annoying when someone just submits the file and their name and like the runtime. It's like, we wanna know a little bit more about it um, than just, what the film is and who you are. Uh, write a cover letter, doesn't have to be extravagant, uh, but talk about why it's important to you and what makes it special. Um, I think that that has sometimes, for me, been a deciding factor of like, this person really cares about this project. Um, let the screeners know that. I think adding a cover letter is a really great idea. Um, and one bit of advice that I was going to share just as being a, a judge and a screener is don't reach out to the screeners directly and bug them about getting in. I mean, maybe for some advice of, hey, do you think that this would do well or should I take it back to editing? Um, but I think sharing your story and then also just make sure that you're checking the boxes and filling out those applications completely. Uh, I've been part of some festivals that, you know, if you forget one little thing, like you don't include your phone number or something that you can get rejected just because they get thousands of applications. So some great insight there. Um, Deanna, what about you? Any other thoughts on uh, tips for getting accepted into film festivals? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I've heard Joel say that before about um, the hierarchy of festivals, but it's not my experience in animation festivals and in short film festivals. And it's curious because I was thinking about Ann Arbor. When we did the intros, we announced that it was a world premiere or a, a North American premiere, but then the, um, the programmer, when we asked her if that mattered, she said it didn't really matter at all, that that's not, that wasn't a basis for selection. And the other festivals I've been on selection committee, the premiere thing is not, um, not at all important. Um, it's the quality of the film, but Again, on tips and having said that, um, you know, I've been on a couple of international selection committees where, you know, you're looking at 3000 films over three weeks. 
And um, there are also, there's so much randomness to it. You just don't know, did the selection committee see a film right before my film that's kind of like my film? Or, you know, did they just come back from lunch and they're like overly full and kind of sluggish? Or do they need to go to lunch and they're hungry? You know, there's all this stuff out of your control and it's hard to really know what, why things get selected or don't get selected when it's so amazingly competitive, like 3000 films and a hundred or 120 get selected. That's a huge number of really good films that were not included in the programming. Um, I, when I did a selection in Zagreb, I started keeping notes of things that were um, kind of trends, you know, like, and wrote an article like, don't have your film wake up with an alarm clock, you know, put, um, don't wait for things to peak until later, grab the audience right away. I mean, there, there are a bunch of things that might help, you know, you get selected, but you also kind of don't know, like at Zagreb, one of the um, selectors, he was like, I am so sick of seeing butterflies. If we see another butterfly, I'm going to throw up. And then, you know, a film would come up, he'd go, butterfly, butterfly, you know, and, and how would you know as a filmmaker that that one little icon is something that all these other filmmakers are using too? So it's kind of a, kind of a crapshoot, you know, whether you get in or you don't get in, but you know, you're not going to get in if you don't try. Some great insight there. Um, I, I love that you wrote that article talking about different trends that you've kind of seen over and over and over. I know that reminded me of a friend of mine who's a producer for a pretty big production company talking about all the pitches that she was getting for uh, pandemic related stories as of even April, 2020. And some of it is kind of like read the room, you know that that's gonna be a hot trend. So get a little more creative, but I think the big takeaway is going to festivals and even just keeping up on new content being released and see what trends are, or if you have a different angle for it, or um, you know, probably more importantly, just speak your own authentic voice and share your own story. That's gonna be the best one, but it is kind of a crapshoot. You don't know if you're gonna get in, not guaranteed. Um, there are always a lot of really amazing films that don't make it into the top. And that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means there are a lot of really good ones and it's hard to pick. So great point there. Um, we actually have a question from the audience that I wanna bring up here. And Suzanne has asked, what is the best way for students to begin researching to find which festivals to enter? That's a great question because I could see it being a little overwhelming, especially for your first time. So John, can we toss it to you first? Do you have any recommendations? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the no brainer, you know, start is Film Freeway. Um, so it was without a box and without a box is, is either gone or it's on its way away. And Film Freeway is really the dominant, um, you know, tool in the festival industry. Um, and so you go there and you can start researching festivals. Um, there's a lot of information on the site itself. You can save favorites. And then you go to the festival's website, to Jackson's point, look at the films that were there beforehand. And then I think one thing that's really important is hopefully you've got, you're starting to build a network of filmmakers. So if you're a student, maybe that means your classmates, uh, your professors, maybe some alumni, if you're connected to any of them and talk to them about what they think would be good film festivals, right? Learn from the people that, that did it before you already have some experience. Um, they're going to give you really good advice. Hopefully, <laughs> you know, you want to have good, good people in your network, um, educated people in your network. Um, but also you never know somebody who you speak to may have a line on a film festival. And this is the dirty secret of film festivals is that, I don't wanna say there's a back channel, but if you've already played in a film festival, you know the programmers, you know the people there, and you can say, hey, please check out my friend's film, it's really good. Or if you've worked at a film festival or, or you've programmed or been a jury for a film festival, you probably know somebody there. And it's always good to help get somebody on the radar. It doesn't mean that they're gonna instantly jump to the front of the line, um, but selecting films, uh, that you know people that have been to those film festivals, they've verified them, um, and doing your homework. I will also just say, like, there's a lot of really 
bad film festivals. <laughs> if you're going to have 10,000 film festivals, there's going to be a lot of really bad ones um, that may not be worth your time submitting to. Even if you got into them, you get some laurels that you put on your website, but it's not even something that you can attend when there wasn't COVID. They're all online. Um, they have you pay a fee for each category that you're trying to win an award in. So, you know, do your research and just talk to other people because you never know how that might help your film find a home. Great advice there about doing your research. Um, another note too being, not only are there a lot of film festivals and some of which unfortunately are not that great or do charge you for things that kind of seem a little ridiculous, but there are a lot of niche film fests too for very specific genres, not only as we talked about experimental film festival or documentaries or whatever, but some themes as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that too. Uh, Jackson, what are your thoughts with submitting to film festivals, tips for students or just in general for searching? Um, one resource that I found helpful and helped me get into a festival that I never would have heard of otherwise probably, uh, Movie Maker Magazine puts out quarterly lists of either like the coolest festivals to go to for 2021 or the best horror film festivals of 2021 or the best festivals worth your submission fee. They, they're constantly putting out lists of uh, festivals that they know and have been to and know that it's worth either going to or checking out the movies there uh, or that if you were to submit to it and get into it, it's definitely worth it. Uh, the hat I'm wearing right now I got from the Mammoth Lakes Film Festival uh, in California where it said, I read that article and it was like, this festival is cool because they fly you out. Even if it's a short film, they put you up in a hotel, you get to see all this beautiful scenery. And I was like, Oh, that sounds cool. I'll try to submit to that just kind of randomly. Um, and then I got in and they flew me out to California from the world premiere of my short film, which I was not expecting at all, but was it worth the entry fee? Absolutely. So that's one resource. Um, John also made a lot of good points that, that I totally agree with. So those lists are actually on film freeway. Now they put the movie magic and filmmaker lists were literally on film freeway. You can select yeah. and it limits those by, you know, what the larger world has, has said as a good film festival. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice and convenient. I love that. <laughs> All right, Deanna, what other thoughts do you have for searching for film festivals, submitting um, whether or not you're a student? Yeah, and I, I have also been flown out to uh, a film festival more than once to show my short film. So one of the things I look at when I consider festivals is what um, kind of perks do they have? There are definitely some um, kind of sleazy, slimy <laughs> festivals where they'll try to sell you the trophy that you won or you have to pay a ticket, you know, to see your own film. That that shouldn't be. So one of the things in ASIFA, the international animation group that I'm part of, I'm a VP right now. One of the things we do is try to go for filmmakers rights and to make sure that filmmakers are respected by the festivals. And Ann Arbor this year actually did this slogan of pay artists. They paid everybody back a per minute um, amount for having their films in the festivals, which festivals used to do too. Their film freeway is great though. There are a, like the niche festivals, that's great. Student festivals, that's great. And also there's, you can see what the fee is. And there are a lot of no entry fee film festivals, especially internationally that you can put your film in. Um, so yeah, I would, I would just underscore what everyone else um, said too. It's mostly a process, it's research, it's work, and you gotta do it. That's a great point about the uh, search features with Film Freeway of how you can narrow things down, whether it's something like no um, entry fee or anything else. I think that's, that's really good to note. Um, another kind of insider tip that I learned again from being part of a film festival is a lot of film festivals do have ways that uh, you could have the fee waived. Um, that could be if you're a student or, you know, different qualifications. Some of them, not all, you can message them and ask for a promo code to be able to get through and have a reduced or completely eliminated fee. So 
I would make sure to read the fine print for submissions because I know with the feminist film festival that I ran here in town, that's where we put it was at the bottom. And it's kind of like the little secret that teachers might put in the syllabus of, uh, hey, if you got to this point, here's a bonus for you. Check it out and see and do your homework and um, there might be some gem hidden in there for you. Um, all right, I know we just have a gee, less than five minutes left. So we are gonna kind of jump to the end here um, of some takeaways from, you know, submitting to Film Fest, attending Film Fest, any experience that you had and how that's helped you grow as a filmmaker and storyteller or educator. Um, what are the takeaways? Deanna, I'm gonna throw this one to you first. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's just a big part of my life. I love watching good work. And I did bring this box, so I wanted to show it. This is the uh, the Academy DVD screeners this year. They don't all fit in the box. But, you know, at one point there was like 600 some films that I could see in all the categories. And it was just a wonderful gift to be able to look at, you know, this amount of work. And I feel that way about being on screening committees too. I will say, cause it kind of sounds from what other people are saying that a lot of times it's one person who makes the decision, but the festivals I've been involved with have layers of screeners and um, levels of screening where you, you know, you get through one and then you, it's cut down, another you're cut down, another you're cut down. And so it's not just one, usually one um, one layer of, of decision-making. It's usually lots of layers, it seems like these days. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's enriched my work totally. And again, entering festivals, you get in a festival. I was in a festival in Ashland last week, and then I got an invitation to get in, to, to enter another festival because of being in the previous festival and they gave me a waiver too. So um, lots of opportunity there. I just encourage people to join this party. Definitely great advice there. Join the party, I love that. Um, Jackson, I'll throw it to you next. Any insight on what you've learned or how you've kind of evolved as a filmmaker with being in, involved with film festivals? Um, I think just being involved with film festivals has kind of reinforced uh, what I already knew is that filmmaking is a collaborative and community effort. Um, and I think every time I go to a festival, I'm kind of reminded of that and you get to see it, uh, not just from the production side, but from what we're all making movies for is for the audience and people experiencing it. Um, and I think that from the from being involved on the selection side, it also gave me an opportunity to watch literally hundreds, possibly thousands of short films from the time that I started uh, at, on Open Projector Night. And um, it helped me focus on, uh, for my own work, things that would bother me uh, as, a, um, as a selection uh, panel member or things that would excite me or um, inspire me. Um, you just get to watch so many films that um, you learn a lot about uh, the way other people make films and about how you make films as well. Thanks for that insight. Last but not least, John, tell us what you've learned or how you've evolved as a filmmaker. Uh, well, I just think film festivals have, you know, enriched my life and my experience as a filmmaker. You know, the, the goal is to show your work to people. The reality is that uh, we're not all making, you know, big budget films. Um, you know, that are going to have a huge audience on television or in mainstream movie theaters. So film festivals are often our first audience for our project. Sometimes it's they're really our only audience for a project besides, you know, going online with them. And, um, you know, that should be celebrated, <laughs> you know, enjoy, enjoy that. Don't, don't skip that step, making a movie and not, not showing your movie to the world and finding the right audience for it is really would be a, a loss. Um, and it's just, it's a part of the step. It's a part of the process of being a filmmaker. You have to show your work, I think, um, to continue to grow and evolve, so. 
great insight all around. Well, I know we're out of time and I just wanna thank you all again, John, Jackson, Deanna, and even Joel who wasn't here live. <laughs> thank you all for taking the time to chat with us and share your insight with viewers. And uh, hopefully we get to do another chat like this. Um, everyone watching, make sure to keep an eye out on the Facebook page for the Alumni Live, the next event coming up. I know we have some fun stuff planned this summer. So until then, take care, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us.